Hi everyone, and welcome back again to the New England Wireless and Steam Museum. We're here in the Miriam Steam Building today with perhaps what are the most visible pieces of our collection, the reciprocating mill steam engines. Anybody who's been to the museum will be familiar with these as we traditionally run these on Steam Up Day. And as we move closer this year to Steam Up, which will be held exclusively on YouTube on October 3rd, you can look forward to more videos giving a little bit more insight into the collection, bits and pieces along the way of some of the very intriguing mechanisms, engines, and so forth that we have here uh, leading up to Steam Up. Um, unfortunately, we're going to be forced to do it on YouTube this year with the coronavirus, but we hope this actually gets uh, information out to a broader part of the world instead of uh, just the people that can come, come to our tucked away little place in East Greenwich here. So here we have perhaps the most famous of our engines in the steam collection. This is our George Corliss engine. You can see the very unique valve mechanism that he came up with. And we'll be doing a, an exclusive video on this engine perhaps later on this week and displaying it run at steam up we hope everybody will like and share the videos as we get closer to that day however before we even get there i have one particular other item down in the basement that nobody ever gets to see it's related to george corliss and i want to let everyone see it and uh make this a little exclusive behind the scenes shot here something else related to george corliss at the steam museum Let's go take a look. Here we are in the basement of one of the buildings at the museum. And we have before us a very unique item. Something that you might not expect to have anything to do with Corliss. Um, something that very, very few people ever get to see here in the museum. Because like I say, it's tucked away in a basement and far too heavy and bulky to move. This is a Corliss cannonball safe made by the Corliss Manufacturing Company or uh, one of their subsidiaries. In this case, we see it called out on the nameplate here as the Corliss Safe Manufacturing Company in Providence. You see, uh, when Corliss set up his company for the purpose of manufacturing steam engines, of course, uh, part of that would involve having extensive equipment to do casting and machining work um, and of course, you know, like any good industrialist, he tried to find other markets and things that he could use his equipment for to make additional money. Uh, one of the other lesser known things that Corliss did was to have made the base bearing uh, ring, support ring, for the turret on the USS Monitor, uh, one of the first ironclads. And that was done right here in Providence. Corliss was said to have had one of the very few um, lathes or you know pieces of turning equipment large enough to handle that base ring in the entire country. Um, so that was done here in Providence, despite the monitor having been made in New York. Now this safe here weighs in at a hefty 24,000 pounds. Uh, it's, I believe, the largest size that they made. Corliss made this safe in several different sizes. Um, this one was made for the Commercial National Bank in Omaha, Nebraska. And I am completely intrigued at the thought that this would have been made here in Providence, uh, sent out to Omaha, presumably, unless of course they had some sort of a local branch that this was sent to, and then somehow or another made its way back here to Providence um, and to end up here at the museum uh, decades ago. Uh, I can't even begin to imagine trying to ship this thing, you know, more than halfway across the country and then return it, you know. So I, I don't actually know the history on how it wound its way back here. So a uh, quick overview on the outside. Of course, we are looking at the door on the front of the uh, cannonball safe. And if it's not already obvious, it is called a cannonball safe because it is almost completely round. The entire idea in this design being that it was a bomb-proof type, uh, type situation. Um, there's no corners to pry against. Any sort of an explosive device that would be 
placed against the safe uh, would be deflected away. Uh, be very, very difficult to damage this safe in any way. Um, and it was just one of the solutions that they came up with at the time. There were several different manufacturers making this variety of safe. Um, and it is absolutely massive. So let's open the door here. Um, there is a little space that you see right here. Uh, that is because the door is in its opening position. One of the cranks here actually serves to um, wind the door on a mechanism, crank the door out to seal up that gap before it actually latches internally. So that gap virtually disappears. So the door, interestingly, spins around on a pivot and then stores inside of the inner part of the safe. Oh, let's see. Uh, one more second here. There we go. Now, so the door has been turned around and we can see, you know, in this area here, the cast iron around the door area, I have it as about eight inches thick right there with a couple of steps, the locking groove that the ring, locking ring actually goes into and so forth. Um, so very, very hefty piece. Now we are actually looking here at the back side of the door, or should I say the lock mechanism on the back side of the door. And I just want to point out the incredible artistry and craftsmanship that goes into absolutely everything that was done back in the day. So here we have uh, one of the uh, combination mechanisms, and there are two on the safe. And this combination mechanism, we can see all of the, the ornate engraving that was done on the internal pieces of that that uh, combination mechanism. And it just it's it's just fascinating how much uh, craftsmen of their day put into these things. So back up just a little bit. Again, we're looking at the backside of the door. This entire area would never be seen by hardly anyone in either the public or even the employees of the, the bank because this, uh, this section, this mechanism is completely covered when it's in normal operation by another cover. It would be hidden behind this door with its own combination to it and presumably just the president of the bank or uh, some, you know, even corporate type person would have that combination to be able to get in and modify uh, the combinations for access to the safe. So that probably one or two people in the world would be the only person to ever get a glimpse of the inside of this, uh, this area. And to take it a step further, this particular combination mechanism that we're showing here has had its cover removed. So all of that, that would never ever be seen even by that person in the bank, because it would be behind a cover that also has the engine turn detail on it. I had just removed that for the sake of showing the intricacy of that, that uh, work, the engraving that was done inside. And similarly on the time lock mechanisms, we have a, a small key here. Each one of the combinations is uh, connected to a time lock that would lock out the combination mechanism. And inside uh, the time lock mechanism, you see all the detailed engraving that was done on the parts and pieces uh, that make that up, the latch mechanism and so forth. Really a work of art in and of itself that would never ever be seen by anyone. And that is exactly why I want to share it here today. So, um, you know, despite all that impressive uh, craftsmanship and so forth, still, I'm sure everybody is asking, what is the story with the safe? Well, um, everything that we're looking at is just the backside of the door. It spins around and stores internally, but the real magic is the entire inside of the safe is a ball and spins around to reveal the actual compartments to store the valuables in. Now here we have the first uh, section. The bottom area of this safe has been divided into several separate compartments and there would be a door right here that I will show you in just a moment and another door above. 
the upper section is completely wide open um, and can be accessed via three different doors around the periphery of this ball, whereas the bottom one is separated into an individual piece. So that ball continues to turn. Another hand hole. Now here we have an area where there's two separate doors. Um, you know, so presumably that could be divided off into its own, you know, separate uh, deposit box, or perhaps each one would be um, designated as accessible to one particular employee of the bank, or you know, something of that nature. Maybe even a high-value client of the bank depositor um, would have their own specific access to their compartment in the safe. That particular, the bottom compartment there, I don't believe has ever been opened by us as we don't have the combination and it is separated internally. Similarly, the last one here, this one of course, is accessible via the inside because it's wide open, but another compartment here on the bottom that's never been opened while the safe has been here at the museum. We have started to do a little work on the, um, the cover um, for the lock mechanism uh, to kind of get an idea of exactly how it functions and how we might be able to get into some of these uh, compartments without damaging any of the, the lock mechanisms. Incidentally, the locks on these on this safe and all of its sisters uh, was made by well-known lock company Sargent and Greenleaf. I believe they are still in business today making uh, electronic locks for safes and all sorts of other things. So um, this is just made by someone else, both the lock and the time lock made by another company and installed here in the safe. And truly a very unique piece, a work of art unto itself and something I wanted to share with everyone because like I say, they never get to see it here. So there it is, a look inside the Corliss Cannonball safe made in Providence and now here at the New England Wireless and Steam Museum. Thanks for watching, hope you like and share the videos and look forward to more videos to come as we head into Steam Up for this year, uh, hosted here on October 3rd. Thanks for watching.